Hello and welcome back to another How To Django tutorial. My name's Tom with Master Code Online. As always, you know, f don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our channel. Uh, anyhow, in today's tutorial, we're going to add some search functionality to our uh, blog uh, application here. So let's get started. Um, basically, this is going to be a very uh, basic search. Uh, we can add a lot of functionality to searches with Django. Um, there's some uh, other apps out there that you can incorporate into your search. But basically what I want to do today is just show you how a basic search would work. Uh, it It is pretty cool and it, it does work. So um, uh, let's get started here. Let's uh, First off, we're going to import um, some functionality here. Uh, and we're going to import the q object once my uh pie charm starts working here what is going on there we go all right so we're gonna say from actually we should put this above our pagination function that we created so from django dot db dot models import q capital q that is um, all right, so what this does is it encapsulates our query, um, which will query the database with. So it encapsulates it for us, and you'll see how it all works here shortly. I'm just going to go down to the bottom here, and I'm going to create a view function. So we're going to say define search. This will take one parameter, and that's going to be request. All right, and that's coming from the urls.py file. Um, all right, so next thing we want to do is uh, create a template. So template is equal to, and we're going to say blog forward slash uh, post list underscore post post underscore list dot HTML. All right, so we don't want to repeat ourselves. Um, so we'll use the list that we already have. Um, basically our search is going to return a list to us so might as well use the post list right so we don't have to create another template um, and then what we need to do is get the query um, so we get the query we're going to use a URL uh, query string like we did in the previous tutorial if you haven't seen that go back several tutorials ago I'll include the link below uh, first thing we're going to do is get the query or save the query to a variable and we're going to say request dot get dot get and we're going to get q q is going to be the uh query variable if you will for the user's query when they query the database and then we're going to say uh results is equal to and we're going to get the post we want the post table we want the objects and then we're going to filter those objects and we're going to filter with Q. So we're going to um, use the Q uh, expression to encapsulate those queries. And we're going to say title under underscore two underscores. Then we're going to say I contains. And what I contains does is basically says, did I spell that right? No, I didn't spell that right. I contains basically says, Hey, if the query is in the title in this case, then uh, return it. So if it contains whatever we're querying the database for, return it. All right. So we're going to set it equal to something and we're going to set it equal to query. All right. Now, I don't want to just search for a title. I want to search the body as well. So right here, I'm going to put a space. Make sure you close out your queue. All right, there. And then I'm going to use the pipe symbol. And what the pipe symbol says is or. It's or. And then if we wanted to use two or say end, we would use the um, the little dude. I forget what he's called. Appersend. Can't pronounce it. Anyway, who cares? Uh, there we go. Uh, so we're going to use another Q expression to query to encapsulate our query. There we go. And we're going to say body. And then underscore underscore i contains again all right and we're going to set it equal to query just like that all right and that's how we query the database all right or basically search the database this right here gives us the ability to search and find 
if a title contains whatever we're querying the database for or if the body contains it all right um so hit return now we're going to be returned a list now if our list is super large we want to use uh pagination now we set this up in the previous tutorial so if you didn't watch the previous tutorial go back and watch it because otherwise you're going to be really lost how i do this all right so we go pages is equal to um page in, pagination all right and then we're going to say request so we're passing our arguments request and then results is going to be our result um our objects that we're passing to our, our pagination and then we want to return just for demonstration purposes just one object per page this way we can make sure our pagination is working with our search all right then we need to get the context variables so context and that's going to be a dictionary in here we're going to say items colon pages and we're getting the first object in the index so we use zero and then uh page range is our next one and we're going to use colon and then we're getting the second object in the list so we'll use one and there you go all right um another no we'll just leave it like that and then we're going to return render we've seen this before request template and context all pretty simple all right so we set up a new view and this for pep eight reasons this should be two returns all right so we set up our view so the next thing we need to do is set up our urls so we'll go to urls and we're just going to put in here um our import our search function our search view function and then right under uh post list actually before i do that let's go and take out this um function hyphen function it's really annoying and that was from previous tutorial when we we're using class-based views anyhow let's go ahead and put a new uh url in here so we're going to use url raw string and then our little carrot and then we're going to say um results we'll just call it results uh, and then our forward slash and then our dollar sign and comma and then search is our view and then our name is going to be why don't we call it search oh yeah we'll call it search all right there we go so we got a url set up uh next thing we want to do is go into our uh post list.html file in here we need to add a um form this way we can get the user's input okay so i'm just going to create a very simple form so we're going to say form method is equal to uh get, oops, get um then our action and our action is going to be to the url that we just created so uh url uh blog i think we call it search and then we'll close out our url and this is how we're going to pass our query because right now we're in the blog list so if we go to our urls and we visit blog list uh and the user sees a search when they click on the search we're going to pass a value our action is going to be go to the search view basically that's what we're doing right here with the action all right um then we close out our form and move our form down now let's go ahead and put it input input and we're going to say name and we're going to give our query a name of q if you remember back in our views we are getting q so we're setting q right here all right and then we're going to say uh value and we're going to get request dot get dot q like that and then might as well just set a placeholder and we'll say search all right um let's add a button as well button class and i'm gonna use some bootstrap here so it looks something like a button so btn success and we need a type of submit and close out a button and we'll just give it uh not a name but a value search 
All right, so there's our form. Now, if we go and open up our blog list page, now you're gonna have to re remember we changed the URL, so it's not it's no longer blog list uh, function. It's blog list. So I can get this URL to get out. There we go. Hit return. Ah, oh, come on. Sorry about this. My computer's being extremely slow. All right, so my computer finally caught up. If you see up here, we got a search box up here. So if we just type in um, Python and search for that, we get Python. Uh, we have one object or one blog post. And uh, it's only returning one because our pagination went away. Um, I'm going to go in and create another blog post here because I want to show you guys something. Um, God, it's so slow. All right, so let's create a new blog post. Um, we'll call this uh, How to Python. All right, and I'll just put whatever in here, whatever. Uh, category doesn't matter at the moment. We'll set it to published. All right, and save it. Uh, all right, back to our page here. We're gonna refresh. And notice we got our query up here for Python. Now, when I go to part two or page two, I'm gonna get a value error. Cannot use none as a query value. Okay. So what's that mean to us? Um, basically what's happening is we're in uh, results, all right? So when we're in results, well, there's actually two problems here, I should say. All right, so we're in results and we're in our results view. So if we go back to our results view and we're querying um, the database table post with query, all right? So we're asking, hey, query, uh, get it, uh, or, Hey Django, return whatever matches query. But when we query a database, we can't query with none. So if query is returning none, we're going to get an error. So how do we handle that? Uh, first, first thing we can do is we could do something like this. Say if a user doesn't just goes to our results page, because if I just go and type in, come on. If I just type in results, all right, just go to straight to the results page, I'm going to get this error. If I can get this to remove Q. So if I go right to the results page, I'm going to get an error. So if a user somehow ends up on your results page, say through a search or something like that, and it ends up here and there's no value, they're going to get a query error. So how do we fix that? It's really simple. If we're going to put an if statement we're going to say if query so if query exists if query is not none uh go ahead and return these results all right so go ahead and query the database if query is not none now if query is none we'll do else and we'll say hey if query is none why not you, why don't you just um return all the objects so return uh post dot objects dot filter and we're going to say uh, status and we're going to set the status equal to published. And while we're doing that, status must be published, right? Yeah. All right. So we got status as published. So we only want the published ones returned to us. Um, so if we go back now and hit enter on results, once my server catches up, there we go, go ahead and now hit return on results and notice I don't get the error anymore. So we've taken care of the error. Now the next problem we're going to have is when we put Python in here and we change pages, notice Python's removed. So let's do that again. Watch what happens. Put Python in here. I'm going to click search and you notice I get an object returned to me. There's actually two objects that match my query. Um, but when I click to go to see the second 
one, we get intro to ja uh, Django. Now there's three objects. What is happening? Basically, what is happening is when we click on a new um, page here, we're refreshing our results. All right, our our result view. Okay, but what we want to do is when we click on this, we want to keep our query in there. So how do we do that? Go ahead and open up your pagination HTML file. And right after you see, we're going to do this three times. So right after you see the question mark page at, and then the items that previous page number, we're going to go ahead and put an if statement here. So we're going to say if query, if query exists, we're going to do something. So if query, then we're going to go ahead and do the end symbol and we're going to do Q is equal to um, query. All right. So we're, for this to work, we're going to have to end if first off before I go anywhere and confuse myself End if. All right. Now we're going to take this and we're going to copy it. And we're gonna need three more or two more times. I'm sorry, two more times. Um, I just need to find where we're putting them down here. After uh, page I, we're gonna put one in there. All right, and also down here after this uh, next page number, we're gonna put one in there. All right, cool. But this still doesn't work right because we need to get the value of query. Now, the only way we can get the value of query in our current setup is return it um, with the context. So go into your views, go down. We got query right here. Go down here and we're just going to add query like that and like that. All right. So now if we go back into our browser and make sure our server restarts. All right, mine just restarted. We'll go back and we're going to search for Python this time again. And notice we got two objects returned to us or two pages, one object per page. And when I click on the second page, I get how to Python. Now I get the second um, object like before we were not getting it. Now I can bounce back and forth and take a look at our, our query showing up here. First off, we're passing page, all right? And that's coming from our, our pagination or our paginator, all right? And then we're, um, if you will, concatenating the query together using the uh, end symbol. And then we're getting Q is equal to whatever our query is up here. And we're able to now bounce back and forth between the objects returned to us. All right, so if you guys have any questions how to do a search in Django, please let me know. Like I said, we can extend this and we'll look at that eventually in our tutorial series. Uh, otherwise, don't forget, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Have a nice day.